Now, welcome to what the f It's like, are you smarter than a fifth grader if by fifth grader you mean turnip? Oh, we don't have a preview tonight show since uh, we can't get our real connection working. So let's go straight to the panel intro. Many are called, few are chosen. They just showed up. Let's meet the panel. In the far chair, she's so hot, fire melts in her mouth. Who knew fire could melt? It's social media consultant, a member of the comedy troupe Suburban Squirrels. It's Teresa Condon. In the middle chair, it's nurse and fellow Suburban Squirrel. It's Frankie J. She's so sharp. Sharp Cheddar is now called Frankie Cheddar. In between them, it's former star... Oh, it, in the middle, it's the host of the award-winning show King Connection. It's Rusty King. If humor was a light bulb, electricians would screw him in the dark. Finally, sitting next to me, it's sales next door near Scott Birch. He's the one thing Lindsay Lohan won't blow. Make sure to put that on your resume, Scott. <sighs> Issue number one. Are the pretty petty? If she's hot, will her personality be not? People blessed with more symmetrical facial features, which are considered more attractive, are less likely to cooperate and more likely to selfishly focus on their own interests. Researchers at the universities of Barcelona, Edinburgh, and Enrique Turgliano Universitat Automata de Madrid, <laughs> a.k.a. Europe's Ivy League, conducted the Prisoner's Dilemma game on numerous participants and then analyzed the faces of the participants. The researchers found that people with more symmetrical faces were less likely to cooperate and less likely to expect others to cooperate. They speculate that pretty people are healthier and thus more self-sufficient. On the other hand, there is an advantage to cooperation. Uh, yeah, the alternate title of that video is It Takes a Village. All right, so, so Teresa, are you buying this or not? I'm not buying this as the hottest person in this room by far. <laughs> I have to say I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little bit offended. I'm a great team player. Are you really? Yes. Is that so if we asked all if everyone is doing what I say. Oh because, well obviously. But, yes. But do people always do what you say? Usually. Because? I'm a Jedi Knight. Oh okay. you, you know the mind <laughs> and I use the force. Is is the force another way of saying your boobs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving away my secrets. <laughs> 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 All right, so Rusty, so by this logic, you are the you are the uh, you you are the least. You, you're the. Oh, watch what you <laughs> say. Oh, that's right. Are you <laughs> right the battle? We kind of got to warm up to that. I think. No, uh, go ahead. Yes. Finish you, your you, thought. You buying this? Well, I know earlier I tried to put my arm around her, and she said, "Don't mess up my hair." Uh huh. So uh, yeah, it could be true. <laughs> uh, okay. So. But all right, so does this mean that you are the most selfish or selfless person at this table? I don't know. I, Scott's pretty selfless. Uh, okay. Selfless. <laughs> selfless. <laughs> well, if the theory is true, right? If right. the theory is true. Right. All right. Well, Scott's. Uh, yeah. Are you the most selfish or selfless person at the table? Um, I would say that I'm most selfish, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm the most beautiful. Um, uh -huh. If the boobs are her force, the force is not strong with you. you know what? <laughs> uh, what I would say is that the, she's not a Jedi so much as uh, she is a dominatrix, which is why James is not here today. Oh. So I think she was a little right. rough on him, breaking him <laughs> off. Uh, and as far as you, speaking of my selflessness. Uh, yes. That's only in certain circumstances, right? And before they utter the safe word, right? Well, yeah, but uh, the problem is that he didn't have the extra five bucks, so he wasn't getting anything like that. You weren't getting a safe word? No, you, no, no <laughs> safe word. You've got to pay five bucks for a safe word. Otherwise, you just got to take it for all it's worth. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I, am, I am buying this. Okay, I am, I am buying this. I think it's absolutely true. Yeah, if you are certainly beautiful, people are more willing to put up with your crap. Okay. No one's, a, no one's putting up with me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Frankie, buying or not buying? Oh, I'm definitely buying this. People that look beautiful definitely get more um, entree into all types of things. And, yeah. and, 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 and what's the irony of this? Who do they get the entree from? 
Yeah, us Other peons who are not symmetrical. Ugly people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ugly people do yeah. pretty people, right? Or the asymmetrical people. Asymmetrical, that's right. So, right? Exactly. I don't know what asymmetrical means. Your face is unbalanced. <laughs> what does that mean? So if I, if I put a line in between your face, if like your eyes, if they could fold your face over, your, everything would match, you're <clears> symmetrical. But well, why would you put a line on my face, John? Oh, just because. Hang on. Line <laughs> is the same. <laughs> All right. I'll throw this out to the table. Mm. Uh, does Hollywood prove or disprove the theory? I think Hollywood proves the theory. Right. I mean, look at all them beautiful people down there walking around. You just mean they're not selfless people? They're not giving in Hollywood? They had to give they to get had where to, they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. They gave something. Okay. But, all right. You got a point there, but excluding the casting couch, uh. <laughs> are they giving? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Rusty, you've been in show business. What's your personal experience like? I find that the stars are self-centered. I was. <laughs> was? But uh, was? I, you can mm -hmm. be giving also. What are you giving? Well, I have to give back. I volunteered at this station for seven years. Oh, I thought you meant like herpes. Mm. <laughs> That's a gift that, that keeps on of. giving. You get it once and you have it. You give yeah. it, you get it forever. It's way better than a Cuisinart. <laughs> you give that thing, I think it goes forever. I think that was the alternate yeah. title of the James Bond parody, Herpes Are Forever. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and think about it. Like, you're always on their mind. Every time you have a flare up, you're the first person they think of. Yeah. Congratulations, Rusty. <laughs> All right. So, I'll, I'll ask this of the women. Okay. Um, if this theory is true, if you describe a girlfriend that you want to set up with a, some dude as describing a Great per as having a great personality is that the kiss of death to many guys in fact it would be it's sad because it is the most Im it's the most important thing but unfortunately most guys would say oh that means she's yeah. ugly <laughs> guys it's a stereotype is, is it the most important thing um, I, I think there's there's gradations of importance i mean obviously you gotta be able to talk you know talk to them but i mean you know i mean because nine times out of ten when a woman speaks to me i just have my bobble head on Really? Oh, yeah. So it's like the grown-ups talking to you and the peanuts? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. So ladies, have you ever described one of your girlfriends to a guy you want to set them up with as having a great personality? Yes, but I, <laughs> I usually <laughs> follow that up with, and she's gorgeous. Let me show you her picture on Facebook. No, 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 no. If, if, for, if, if there's a great personality anywhere in that description, it's usually the kiss of death. Am I right, guys? Yes. I disagree in that there are so many women I've met who their personality is what makes them knockout attractive. So even, many. Even if they're ugly. And I've, hit, you know, and ugly I've been with some beauty queens, and man, you spend an hour with them, and there's nothing there. Yeah, so many women you've yeah. met, both of them. That's his story. No, actually, he's a musician. He yeah. meets plenty of women. Rock star. Oh. oh. All right. We're on to issue can't number argue that. two. And pay attention here. Is justice blind to looks unkind? Should there be affirmative action for those who faces, whose faces get an adverse reaction? Labor economist Daniel S. Hammerschmidt, whose book Beauty Pays, notes that the pretty make a lot more than the plain looking. A lot more money, in fact. $230,000 over a lifetime, which holds true even in professions where looks wouldn't seem to matter. For professors, the pretty premium is 6%, while for quarterbacks, it's 12%. Who knew? Uh, well, actually, men actually suffer a greater repulsive penalty. Unattractive women earn 3% less than average-looking women, while unattractive men make 22% less than attractive men. While one may think beauty is subjective, a common standard for beauty does exist, as most folks will agree on whether a face is hot or not, according to Hammersmith. So, given the earning disparity and that ugliness can be determined, should the law protect the plain looking? For more, we turn to our legal correspondent, Ibex Horn. IH, your thoughts. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I bet you there are a lot of people who wish they could do that, but sadly we can't. But, uh, not really insightful, though, in terms of a legal correspondent. Mm, he's, just, he's a horny guy, though. But uh, anyways, so uh, I'll start with you, Scott. You buying this or not? Um, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm buying it, but here's, here's my issue, is that it's scenery. Everyone likes good scenery, so... <laughs> But good scenery comes at, at a premium, so you pay the extra money for the good scenery. Now, the little troll who's actually doing like all the work, no one cares about him. 
Are you the scenery or oh, the troll? Poor Scott. I am the type of person that hires the scenery. Okay. Mm. Good. No, no, you're either one or the other. You can't. No, there is a no, third no, option. It, no. There is a third option. I didn't. I didn't say that. Yeah, I didn't say there was no third option. I'm just saying that if I have to choose between scenery and not scenery, I would choose scenery. Okay. But before that, I was a troll. You were a troll. Okay. All right. So, all right. So uh, I think there's a lot of good scenery on dead end roads. First of all. Okay. And second of all, if you talk about making money and you have to be good looking, look at Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, T. Boone picking some of the richest men in, in the United States, if not the world, hardly Chippendale dancers. Yes, but they're not ugly, are they? Like repulsively ugly. Like some they're people. not good looking. Okay. Well, but I'll, I'll take your word for it, Rusty, in terms of evaluating guys. But uh, yeah, because I was going to ask the women to evaluate guys and men to evaluate women. But I guess I'm making some assumptions here, am I not? Exactly. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Well, let me ask you: Should the ugly have legal protection? I have no idea. Like, should there be a quota for uh, should there be a quota for ugly people at at, at companies, for example? I have no idea. Like, for example, <laughs> well, so how do I step into that one? I don't know. No. Let's ask an, no ugly ask an ugly Scott? person. Ask an ugly person. Yeah, Scott. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't necessarily think there should be a quota. Yeah, you know, I don't think there should be a quota. But I think you know, if you see a little bit too much hotness cruising around the office, I think you know, there should be maybe like a panel. Maybe you can get like a panel of like a lot of really bitter, like small chested women, Teresa, could do that. <laughs> they could jump in there, they could check it out and make sure like no one's getting, you know, no one's getting over on anyone. That's all right. So I, uh, who's going to decide on the standard of who's ugly and who isn't? And, and it, who's going to decide who, if somebody comes just between the lines? Facial symmetry. Facial symmetry. Facial symmetry. Ah, there that's what go. I was afraid of. So about. everybody that has <coughs> one droopy lid... Uh, something wrong with right. one ear and too many birth, too many birthmarks yeah. on one side of the face could be asymmetric. That's wrong. But don't worry. If, oh, if watch a, out for discrimination. If there is a quota for ugly people here at KMBT, I have it. So I call dibs. Yeah. I call dibs. <laughs> you call dibs. So Teresa, if there yes. was, if the, if the ugly were entitled legal protection, do you think you'd be the defendant? And so it says that ugly guys would have. You have to date ugly guys. No, right. I wouldn't be that cruel. Would it? You think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. You you definitely oppose it then, right? Yeah. Dating ugly guys? Yeah. If, if you if you had the, the oh yeah, first suit you to have date to keep the guys. gene pool clean. Mm. Clean. Ooh, that mm. sounds a little. That sounds a little Aryan there. That sounds a little 1938 <laughs> to me. Has anyone? Has everyone noticed how perfectly symmetric my temples are? <laughs> <laughs> they are lovely. Thank you. <laughs> they light up the room. I'm one of the lovely people, Scott. Rusty, you filled your ugly quota in prison, so it's all right. All right. Now, what issue are we on? A loose track. Issue number. Th- oh, we're on to our first break. Okay, we're back from our break. Issue number three. Do boys balk when asked? Can we talk? A uh, new University of Missouri study finds that boys feel that discussing problems is a waste of time. Professor Amanda J. Rose from the MU College of Arts and Science. Go fighting cows. Finds that contrary to popular belief that boys and men would like to talk about their problems but are held back by fears of embarrassment or appearing weak, uh, they just don't think talking about their problems actually works. Rose believes that the findings may play into future romantic relationships. Way to go out on a limb there, Professor. As many relationships involve a pursuit-withdrawal cycle in which one of the partners, usually the woman, Pursues talking about problems while the other, usually the man, withdraws. I think we have footage of some of Dr. Rose's research. seem to be talking it out. It was going pretty good, I think. Yeah, okay. So, In your face. Frankie, I'll go to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you buying this or not? I just, I think that, um, yeah, women definitely try and get men to 
to express their feelings. And so I think, on the other hand, they should give men the opportunity to express their feelings in any way they want to. Maybe have a wall in the in the house where they can paint their feelings and express themselves. Oh, Scott's rolling his eyes, and you went to sleep. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I thought it was a wonderful there idea. You go. See, so, yeah, different that, ways of self-expression. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, different question. Is talking about your problems a waste of time? <laughs> yeah, to some it is. It can be. If you don't get anything accomplished, it's a waste of time. Okay. So another form of self-expression might be a better better goal. All right. Teresa, you buying this? Um, yes. Talking about feelings is a total waste of time. Compromise <laughs> oh, a is a total dude. waste of time. <laughs> Dictatorship is the only way to go. Only way to get things done. Wait a minute. Um, like in a relationship, kind of dictatorship, like one, Wait one a person. Are, are you the oppressor or the oppressed in the relationship? The oppressor. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, her boyfriend must be European <laughs> or French. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's Lisa Redder. Wow. Oh, oh, I didn't. Really? Rusty. You agree? I'm the strong, sensitive type, and I love to talk it out with a lady. Uh huh. Are you currently in a relationship right now? I'm not. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> We talked it out, and it just wasn't working. <laughs> Scott, you're married, so uh, what's your what's your take on this? Talking about problems is completely crap. Okay, now, I think the guy missed the boat on the study entirely. It's not that guys are going to be embarrassed or anything like that about their problems. It's just that they don't... I, I don't want to talk about... Who, who the hell wants to talk about problems? Let it... Bury it. Go ahead. Suppress <laughs> it. Go ahead. Leave it underneath the ice, man. I don't care. Just leave it there. Who wants to sit there and argue about problems for four hours? Like, you know, you work five days a week, you had two days off, you want to spend a one whole day arguing? Oh, I don't think it's want to. Is it? Is it something you have to do that's good for you? Like no. eating your vegetables, right? No, you know who wants why? to eat your vegetables, who, right? No, no. Why is that good for you? Hashing up all kinds of old junk. Why is that good for you? Who cares? So you're, you're, of, the, you're of the school just holding it all in, right? Absolutely. How's that working for you? Yeah, well, you know, I haven't hurt anyone in a long time, so I guess I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> okay, well, and, well, and, your, and the wife is totally happy? Huh? Yeah. Okay. You <laughs> wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> you, wouldn't, I don't know. you wouldn't. I don't know. I just I don't talk to her much. What do you want me to say? <laughs> uh, okay. You, you just make me a sandwich and that's it? No, no, no. Not even. Not No. I'll make my own sandwich. You make your own sandwich? She, she, yeah, she should just stay in the dungeon. That's good. <laughs> okay. All right. So do you think this, this study is possibly a, a, a front for the therapy industry or as I call it, big crazy? I think it's a front for women who actually think they know what men want. Well, we're embarrassed to talk about our feelings. No, we just don't want to talk about it. It's because the problem. Men can't. The reason. Here's the reason why. Women all over. Here's why men don't talk about feelings. Because every time we say something, you keep track of it. You're worse than <laughs> elephants. The difference between a woman and an elephant is that an elephant will eventually forget, and then seven years down the line, you're gonna bring that up and throw it right in my freaking face. All right. Well, but if you're bitter. still an mm-hmm. asshole in seven years, yeah, we probably would. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's this got to be his fault? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to go on to issue number four. Is breaking wind a cardinal sin? Is passing gas poison gas? The Marine Corps Times, love their centerfolds, by the way, reports that the Corps has banned Marines from s- serving in Afghanistan from audibly breaking wind downrange from, of locals because it offends civilians and members of the Afghan National Army. Marines, current and former, expressed outrage at this, said one, quote, so now we understand that Muslims in Afghanistan are offended by the sound of anal gas explosions, but are quite comfortable with beheading, stoning, female genital mutilation, <laughs> pedophilia, amputations, and hanging or burning homosexuals. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> and before we turn to our military affairs correspondent, Matt, don't ask, don't tell Jones. MJ, what do you think? All right, Matt, you ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm gonna... light, light it up. That fart felt huge. Oh, did it work? Did it work, dude? Yeah. How big was that fireball? I'm not even going to ask what that was. And that's what you get when you type in the search terms, fire, fart, fail. Anyways, I I still think that's kind of fake. (laughs) uh, Yeah, that looked fake. All right, so let's see. Rusty, I I don't know if you ever served in the military, but uh, uh, banning farts in Afghanistan, good idea or bad idea? First of all, I didn't think we could reach a new low on this program. 
Apparently we have. <laughs> You've underestimated me. Uh, it would seem like audible farts would give away your position. I would think you would want to do that if you were a Marine, perhaps a sniper. But it does make sense that if they're doing a lot of primitive things, that, you know, farting kind of goes along with it. All right. So, uh, Fra Frankie, good, uh, good idea or bad idea, banning farts? I think it's a stupid idea. It's a, it's a bodily function. What, you telling me the Afghans don't fart out loud? Oh, get over themselves. Well, maybe They're they don't just... fart out loud. They just fart upwind. Okay. <laughs> up range. Up range. Up range. Up range. Up range. Up range. Yeah. Up Do they get arrested if they fart up range or down range in uh, Kabul or something? I have no I idea. Have, I don't either. Scott? I don't know. Aren't you glad you're not in Afghanistan? <laughs> if I wasn't Afghanistan, I'd probably just start eating beans to rip them just for fun. Are you <laughs> serious? Was there like a war going on and the focus of the United States Marine Corps is to make sure we ban flatulence? I just want to make sure we're all clear here. Well, they want to talk about flatulence. You got people getting killed. You got bombs exploding, helicopters crashing. And yeah, we need to discuss flatulence. See, this is right here the main problem with the government right here, man. This is... This is why I need to get my tinfoil hat on right away. Okay. Yeah. Teresa, good idea or bad idea? Fart banning. Um, I actually think that the military should use this to their advantage. There, it sounds like a great biological weapon of mass destruction oh. if <laughs> utilized correctly. So, so, so they so should they should probably just you know listening to people com people's complaints turn it to their advantage somehow. It is a war. So they should replace IEDs with SBDs. Hmm. Methane gas. There you go. It's, it's the war, the yeah. weapon of the future. That's right, silent death. Yeah. Ah. You know yeah. what? That might be the new. Uh, that might be the new. That might be the new slogan or reference for the "Don't ask, don't tell." <laughs> <laughs> Who broke wind? There don't we go. Don't, 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 don't ask. Don't tell. Us. Don't ask. Don't smell. How's that? Uh -huh. So, are you, are you guys saying in front of like all six of our viewers that mm. you wanted them to use chemical weapons on the Afghani's? No, just <sighs> just fart. Oh my Natural. God. Oh, 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 oh my god. It's oh, organic. Uh, got, got some qualifiers down there? As opposed to natural gas? Well, natural gas has no odor, right? That's so right. They gotta add odor. They have to add the odor to natural gas. Mm -hmm. But this is this is natural this is different. But it's, or, it's organic. This is I used to do that job okay. in Botswana. So yeah. Okay. But wait, should you think farting should be banned by the Geneva Convention? <laughs> <laughs> if it's for people from Geneva, yeah, they smell. <laughs> We're gonna get letters. <laughs> no, that's crazy because you know certain bullets are banned by the Geneva Convention, which isn't that crazy. It's war, and, yep. and really, there are certain bullets you cannot use. Right. Okay. It doesn't make sense. Final question. Th before, I think we have yes. like about thirty seconds. Uh, farting, better or worse than waterboarding? <laughs> better for who? <laughs> the oh, waterboardy yeah. or the waterboarder? <laughs> well, let's try the boardy. It the boardy. Well, yeah, efficient. I mean, yeah, like in Rusty's case, pitching or catching kind of thing. If you're <laughs> catching like Rusty, then it's probably better to have be farted on than be drowned. Okay. What do you? <laughs> yeah, think? probably. So, so farting better than waterboarding? Yeah. Farting yeah. Okay, right. So, you can uh, live through farting. Okay. Waterboarding. So we can use that instead of waterboarding. Okay. Okay. We are <laughs> up to our second break. All right, we are back from our break. Okay, so since we couldn't get the, we can't access the remote KMBT state of the art newsroom. Let's go to pack. Let's go to the discard pile. These are stories that we consider for the show but didn't, or as we call it in our lightning round. Okay, first story: uh, topless day 2011 in Venice Beach. A uh, group is protesting laws that prohibit women from going topless but allowing men to go topless. Uh, initial reaction, Teresa. Equality. I mean, where are we as a society if we haven't achieved that level of equality yet? So, if if the law was equal, should it be that uh, <laughs> everybody can go topless, or everyone should be cover up? Um, I think it should be modified a little bit. I'm going back to what you're talking about earlier about um, pretty people and how ugly people should be kept out of it. Quite frankly, usually the people that um, cover up less on the beach are usually the people you wish would cover up more. So I think this should just be modified. No. I so mean, so ugly, not by gender, but by appearance. So ugly people can have to cover up and pretty people. <laughs> so people like you can go topless, right? Exactly. Would you exercise that? If we that, so wished. It, would you exercise that right? Um, I, I probably wouldn't, okay. but, you know. Rusty? I would sign any <laughs> petition petition allowing women to go topless and I would double sign anyone mandating that they must go topless. Oh, there you go. Frankie. Yeah, I think women should be able to go topless if they want to. Would you? Uh, not me, no. <laughs> no. I decline, thank you very much. 
<laughs> Scott, you go topless every Friday <clears throat> afternoon down at the Berkeley Marina. So what do you think? Well, yeah, I should. I'm rocking a C cup, so I'm good. Uh, Wait a minute, C or D? C. Okay. C. I, I, on my application, I put D because I'm a liar. Um, okay. Yeah, no. If if uh, you know if if women want to uh, until you get the implants, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. If you know if, if you know if women choose to uh, you know if they want to get a tan on the mammaries, I'm good for it. You know what I mean? I'm down. Nothing wrong with that. Now, bottomless could be a problem because burning mm-hmm. the junk, no bueno. Okay. All right, story number two. Stress really does make your hair go gray. Hmm, who am I going to go to first? Who am I? Rusty! What do you think? <laughs> does stress make your hair go gray? Oh my God. This is very stressful trying to make something out of this show. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's, it's, what do you think? It's, it's not stress for me. It's old age. Okay. I mean, really, I didn't... I didn't get gray oh, hair. How's an old age? You're 22. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the stress, man. No, that's emotional age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm almost 60, so I deserve it. I've earned it by now, but... Time's um, what? <laughs> so I don't know. What does everyone think? I think if you look at any president like Obama, if you looked at him yeah. lately, that guy has really gone gray in the last... Three plus years. So I, oh, are you yes. buying it too, Teresa? Stress. Yes, I am. All Stress right, Scott, causes gray hair. No, I'm not buying it. Okay, that's right. Well, are you stressed? No, huh? he's not stressed at all. I don't get all. stressed. I cause stress. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's going to be like 80 here. and he'll have brown hair. Hey, how do you think I'm going to get a 22-year-old look like that? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about him catching all the time. Of course, so he's going to be stressed so out. So you, so you don't use just for men, right? Just for who? Just for men. Uh, it's all about women, dude. Oh, that's true. All right. Next issue. Uh, good ruminations or bad ruminations in a depressed brain. Apparently, uh, dwell if if you dwell on bad thoughts, it can actually adversely affect your health. Frankie, you're the nurse. What do you think? Buying this or not buying this? Negative thoughts make you sick. Yeah. 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 Okay. I feel horrible. Are you having negative thoughts at the moment? I must be having a negative. I feel horrible. I feel. Gosh, I wonder what negative, she's. What are you thinking negative, at the moment? Negative. Negative. God, don't jump, don't don't step on the track. What's the ugliness thing I oh, was bothering? That's true. Me. All right, Scott, you dwell on a lot of negative things. Fine or not? I don't, know, I don't know. I don't dwell on so much negative things, but like right now, like I don't know. Rusty keeps looking at me kind of crazy. I'm starting to get homicidal thoughts, but uh, you know, homicidal <laughs> thoughts. Homicidal thoughts. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know. I, <laughs> Is that what he said? That's yeah. how the movie starts. <laughs> yeah. Really? yeah. No, Trust I think, me, if I was and I'm not, I wouldn't choose you. Heart oh. endowments. He's not a chubby chaser. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. All right. All right, I'll go to, I'll go, all right. So it looks like, uh, are, how are we doing for time? We, we good? Eh. All right, 15 seconds. One last one. I'll throw it at Teresa. Mm-hmm. Uh, China stops women from marrying for money rather than love. You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? It's a terrible idea. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to China anytime soon, right? No. Uh, good idea, bad idea? Marry for money. Women yeah. Mar- women marry for money. Yeah. Women marry for love. Oh, okay. I think All it's right. a great idea. What? No. Well, maybe rich one day. You're crazy. Yeah. All right. That's it for the oh, show. Oh, richer, right? Thank I mean, you very richer. much, crew. Yep. Uh, great. Thank you for the panel. Later.